Okay, there's a little testing setup of our uh, 500 amp liquid cool controller and um, what we have set up to power it traction side a pair of these um, Odyssey AGMs uh, 24 volts and go into our standard kilovac uh, contactor Let's get a bit of extra light on there and uh, that's going into the bus bars up here and feeding into our IGBTs so and come out of this then which would be the um, motor side normally but instead of that uh, we're feeding into this inductor bank here and uh, this is a very good idea by a, a gentleman on the uh, DIY high EV forum uh, and it solves a lot of the problems about having to uh, about having to have uh, a dyno set up for a, a traction motor all that sort of thing so this is basically a three phase uh, filter out of a computer power supply and what we've done here is we've just put all three phases in parallel and uh, we can put 500 amp uh, pulses through that for a couple of seconds and um, it's about 450 micro henry's uh, so it's close enough uh, to what we actually uh, should have to simulate a motor in a stalled state so uh, we've got our clamp on here the uh, to measure motor current diff probe here on the oscilloscope and that is currently on the collector in iter terminals of our switching IGBT now <coughs> I'm doing the test today because the problem that I had uh, was I was seeing a very big spike on the collector in hitter of the uh, switch when it would turn off and that was caused by the fact that the switch was turning off so, f so fast that when the inductors here kicked uh, current uh, back that the freewheel diodes uh, couldn't couldn't actually pick up in time to provide a path for that current and it was basically causing a large um, voltage spike across the switch now as the current increased that spike um, increased in 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 its uh, in its size uh, due to the fact that it's um, I think the formula is what's it, V equals L times DI DT so it was uh, a product of the rate of change of current and the inductance so <clears throat> what I have done is I go over this side under the control board side we have our VLA driver card here. Let me just get something to point with instead of my stupid thumb. This is our VLA driver card, and this is a very powerful gate driver system. Uh, it drives to plus 15 and to minus 8 volts, and um, can do so with a lot of kick in it. Now, <clears throat> this is my little card here that I. I'd explained beforehand uh, that carries the gate resistors and the um, iter resistors and uh, these are 3R3 three and these guys are OR33 ter parts so I think that uh, my problem was down to the fact that they're such a small value uh, that I was hammering the gates back off so fast 
uh, that I that I didn't give the freewheel a chance to catch the uh, uh, pulse coming from the inductor. So, just for experimentation purposes, uh, what I did was I came out on I put this 27R2 uh, watt resistor in here uh, in the it's, it's in the uh, gate feed from the VLA this is the red cable here and uh, it just basically caused everything to, to to slow down and that was a big help but I was finding then that uh, my transistors took a bit too long to turn themselves on so to counter that I took a second of the 27R parts here put a little shocky diode in series and we put this in parallel with our first part here so that when we turn on uh, we're sending current in this path here and we get effectively half of the gate resistance uh, so you get a nice snappy turn on and when we're turning off we, we then uh, cannot send current back through this path so it's got to come through the 27R and that basically slows down the gate uh, turn off and thus the turn off or sorry thus the switching time of the um, IGBT and that then gives the freewheel diode a chance to catch the, sp the spike uh, that comes back out of the um, motor. In this case this is our inductor bank here. Now uh, what I'm going to do is we have our Heatley here set up uh, so that that tells us the motor current. Let me get rid of that piece of crap out of there. So we, I'm going to be going to full throttle here. We've got our BMW Hall effect throttle here. And we're on the CE. So I'm going to try to get the oscilloscope in shot here. Uh, get this camera to do the job for me. And I'm going to just basically take the thing to full throttle, which will be about 500 amps. So here goes. Actually, I might turn off the light. Might make it a little bit easier to see, a bit better. Okay, here we go. Full throttle, 500 amps, 507 amps. Uh, I gotta let it off again, or we'll cook our inductor bank. So these guys tend to heat up. Uh, quite a bit uh, when you're pushing 500 amps through them uh, but just to prove that it is 500 amps I'll focus on the uh, uh, current here and I'll just take her to full throttle briefly there we go 507 uh, this is on a voltage scale here by the way because the uh, my old style uh, DC current clamp basically puts out uh, I think it's a um, millivolt per per amp so half a volt as you could see there uh, gives us basically 500 amps so what I'll do now uh, is I will change uh, my scope so that it's on the gate in hitter of this IGBT here I'll do another quick pulse up to 500 amps just to show that. Okay, so we're back and we're on the gate emitter terminal of number 4 IGBT. And uh, see if you can get focused in on the scope again. And I'm going to just take us briefly to 500 amps here. So here we go, throttle coming on now. Right till she sinks, there we go. Uh, Full throttle, 500 amps, and back off to zero. So again, just on the DMM, just to prove the point. 500 amps. So, that is uh, the little 
modification there. Now, the thing that I'm not sure about is whether I should change all of the individual gate resistors here, uh, or should I just keep this keep this kind of as a setup going on? Um, here, so any advice would be appreciated on that front, and um, I'm going to do a few more experiments, a couple of different sizes here, see what the hell happens, and, uh, but so far so good, uh, we seem to be getting um, even thermal spread on the uh, heatsink, and even though we don't have any coolant flow here, and that we're pushing pretty much full current through it uh, it's not causing any thermal issues at the minute now ad yeah, ad admittedly that's only at 24 volts um, now we'll be at a nominal 100 and, what's 152 volts in the car so I might see if I can get I think if I can get my hands on a 72 volt forklift charger to uh, simulate a power supply for me just to take the voltage up a, shot, a little bit but I think the majority of the problems in these kind of uh, controllers are caused by current and not voltage per se so even though it's only 24 volts input um, I'm still pumping the controller up to 500 amps so any of the stray inductances or things that would be causing trouble uh, I believe will cause trouble at 24 volts just as well as as if I was at 240 or so it's just that the closer that the bus voltage gets to the tolerance of the IGBTs or the, or the capacitors that's when you get problems when a spike will send it above the uh, tolerance voltage so right that's about it for today's experimentation and these guys as I say they, they do get a good bit hot but uh, yeah so far it's a good uh, method for testing um, so it takes out all of the problems with, ha with having to have a dyno or so, some kind of a way to hold um, hold her back uh, so you can pretty much just do it here on the on the bench. So, right, that's it for now, folks.